Hey everybody, it's BuilderDude35 and this week I'm going to be sharing with you four important tips for doing the wiring on your FLL robot. So I'm back this week with another fan suggested tutorial and this may seem like a weird topic for a tutorial but it's actually pretty important especially for younger teams who are just starting out and don't understand the importance of this. So anyway, if you can imagine building a robot in FLL that's capable of scoring 500 points, you're all excited because you're going to win and everything, and then you go there, it's competition time, and then you have a wire sticking out, and it just gets snagged on a mission model, and then that's it, your robot's finished. That would really stink, right? Well, if you follow my four tips, hopefully you'll get something out of this video today, and this could help you to avoid accidents like that. So let's go. Now my first tip is to neatly coil all of the wires within your robot. And you've probably heard me say this before if you watched my top 10 tips for building an FLL robot video. And this is a pretty important step. If you see this picture here, what I've done with my robot is all of the wires are neatly coiled within this robot on either side. And because you don't want your robot to drive around like a spaghetti monster with wires hanging out everywhere and then you get snags on something and then you have to keep rescuing your robot and wasting all those points. You keep your wires neatly coiled and contained inside your robot so it can't snag on anything. It also looks nice and neat and the judges will really appreciate that. My second tip is try to keep the wiring scheme as simple as possible. Like, you don't want to make something purposely confusing and that that's where mistakes occur. Like, even Da Vinci said himself, if you're trying to accomplish a goal through building a machine, try to accomplish that goal through the simplest way possible. And anyway, to relate this to the wiring, if you have a sensor that's on the left side of the robot, then plug it into a sensor port that's on the left side of the robot and run that wire down the left side of the robot. I mean, it sounds really annoying and repetitive, but it just keeps everything so simple. A left sensor plugged into a left port with a wire running down the left side of the robot. Everything makes sense, and it's just so much easier to manage. Tip number three is to establish a wiring scheme that your entire team understands and can all agree on. And this is important because if little Johnny goes up to the competition table to do the robot and something goes wrong or he needs to change out a sensor, you want little Johnny to understand and know what he's doing at that competition table. So you want your whole team to know how to fix something if something goes wrong. This applies beyond the wiring. This pretty much applies for anything you can think of about your hardware in FLL or even your software. So anyway, in summary, uh, make a wiring scheme that your whole team agrees on and understands. Another thing that I've never personally tried, but I've seen other teams do, is label the parts of your robot. So like, let's say this is color sensor 3, have uh, label this 3 with like a little post-it note or marker or, th or something, and label the wire it uh, plugs into also 3. And so you could see, you could trace it back to port 3, and I say, that's color sensor 3 there. And you could also do that with motors and stuff. It's just a, a neat trick to keep everything organized. My last and final tip is that after you've established this whole wiring scheme with your team, don't ever change your wires. And I've seen this personally when I was mentoring my school's FLL team this year. I've seen this personally happen. What happens is little Johnny's making his program and everything, and then he puts it on the table to test it and he sees the robot does pretty much what he wants it to do except the one thing is it's turning every turn it's making is in the opposite direction he wants it to go so what, what he does is he takes the motor cables and he switches them around so now motor B is motor C, motor C is boat motor B and now his program works and great little Johnny feels great about himself but now all of the other teams programs don't work because their programs are now going to spin turn in the opposite direction so basically the lesson here is after you've established your wiring scheme, don't change it. This pretty much goes with all of the hardware on your robot, unless you're expanding upon something that's removable. And if you ever need to change your program for anything, change the program. I mean, it kind of sounds silly, but that's just what you need to do. Don't change the hardware, because that could have an effect on somebody else's machine. Thanks for stopping by this week. If you haven't already, go check out my website if you've got the time. Also, don't be afraid to submit some more ideas for tutorials. I mean, I'm getting some pretty good ideas, and thanks for that. 
So anyway, I'll see you sometime in the future. Bye.